Hello and welcome to one more tutorial on using I square C LCDs with the Arduino Uno. This time we will also be exploring timer interrupts, integrating all that we have learnt about the I square C LCD and combining it together to create a clock which is driven by Arduino's internal timer. So here's our setup. There's the Arduino Uno, the MB102 power supply and the I square C LCD. The connections are detailed here, the jumper cable going to the Arduino, the A4 and A5 terminals of the Arduino getting connected to the I square C LCD. So here are the connections, the A4 and A5 goes to the SDA and SCL and the VCC and ground are connected to the power supply rails of the MB102 breadboard power supply. And here is the preliminary address scan that we have done. In our case, the address of the I square C device happens to be 0x27 and we will be using this in our code. Here is our shopping list and the links to buy some of these would be there in the description box. And here are the male and female characters which we are going to use to set the Arduino free. So this is one really practical implementation and when we have this clock ready, you realize that it's convenient to have a clock that's not connected to the PC always. And so here we have one practical advantage of eventually setting the Arduino free. So here are the code snippets. This is a slightly complicated code, so I'll just go through it step by step. The first step of the course is to include the liquid crystal library for I square C LCDs. Here is the address of it 0x27 and it's a 16 bar 2 or 16 column and 2 row LCD crystal. Now we have three variables. These are basically the variables which keep a track of the number of hours, the number of minutes and number of seconds. And we have declared all these as unsigned integers 16 bit. We also have a volatile integer called tick and this is the value which is going to get updated in the interrupt vector. So every time the interrupt fires, we will uh, rig up the interrupt to fire every second and every second as the interrupt fires, the tick would get incremented and when the tick gets incremented, we will have the void loop running over to update either the value of the second or the minute or the hour as the case may be. So the default would be to update the value of seconds, but in case we have hit 59 seconds, then the number of seconds would get updated to zero and the number of minutes would get incremented. So this integer i we are going to use uh, in our void loop and the string timer is basically the initialization. So this is just an initial value to start off the clock. So uh, we also need those thresholds like the second would get incremented till 59, the maximum value of minute can be 59 and similarly the maximum value of hours can be 23. We are following the 24 hour uh, time format here and so these uh, maximum values we have saved as variables and we will be using it further in our code. So here is the setup loop. We have initialized the LCD, cleared the entire LCD and turned on the backlight and set the cursor to 00, 0 and printed the initial characters. Okay, so here is an important uh, concept that I would like to bring out. So when we type out the string on the LCD screen, then you would notice that uh, the second is basically the sixth and the seventh place. The minute is basically the third and fourth place and the hour is basically the 0th and the 1st place. So when we update the minute or second or hour, we'll keep this in mind and we'll update only these values. We'll erase those values and update only these values. We're not going to go ahead updating the entire time, time value and this would basically help to speed up things and make sure that the type, the clock doesn't go uh, out of sync. So here what we're doing is that we are extracting the current value of the hour, minute and second. As I said that we have initialized the uh, values to, uh, I am going to be initializing it to close to odd hours so that you can see all the three values change. And uh, so we can extract that value by 
And so what you're doing here is timer is getting converted to a substring that is from timer we are extracting these two rows uh, and then we are converting it to an integer and storing it as hour. Similarly for minute and similarly for second. Uh, note that when you give substring 6, basically from the 6th to the end, that is the 6th and the 7th place values, characters get extracted. This is the timer initialization, TCNT1 is 0, TCCR1A is 0, TCCR1B is set to 0 and then we set a prescaler of 256 by setting the CS12 bit as 1. We want the clear timer on compare mode. So we would be basically using the uh, output compare mode and uh, for this we need to set the WGM12 bit as 1. The timer mask bit is initialized to 0 and then we set the output compare A bit OCIE 1A as 1. The OCR 1A or the threshold value is set to 62500. The logic for this is that with uh, 16 megahertz per second cycle and a threshold value of 6000, 62500 and a prescaler of 256. If we multiply these together, we get one second and we want the output compare A register to be such that the output compare A interrupt fires every second and this is used to increment the value of tick and based on the value of tick, then the time should get displayed on the LCD screen. So the um, timer compare interrupt itself is very simple. We are just going to increment tick, nothing else. So we come to the void loop. So this is a little bit more complicated. So the first step is like if tick has been incremented, then obviously tick would be larger than second. And if uh, second is going to be less than second max, that is seconds are going to be less than 59, then we are going to set second to tick and we are going to write that value. On the other hand, if tick is greater than second, but the uh, value of second happens to be equal to second max or 59 then it means that we are going to make the second zero and try to uh, write the value of minute. So here it is if minutes are less than the maximum value of minutes then minute is going to get incremented. If minute is near its threshold then we set minute to zero and then decide to increment hours and in case hour also happens to be uh, at its threshold then we would reinitialize all the values to zero and uh, here we are using a function write time so what this is going to do is that it passes on the value of minute and a flag so this flag 0 1 and 2 basically tells the write time function uh, whether it has to update the uh, hour or the minute or the second value and uh, this is the write time function so write time function basically takes two arguments one it takes the value which has to be written and then it takes the integer c this integer c is basically this flag which I have indicated here which tells this function whether it has to update the hour value or the minute value or the second value. Uh, now there is an interesting thing uh, you can either set an if else loop with c equal to 1, c equal to 0 and c equal to 2 and set the cursor to the uh, appropriate place and rewrite the value or you can make a small observation that this formula the total length of the string timer minus 2 minus 3 into c gives you exactly the uh, place where you have to set the cursor. I leave this as an exercise for you. Uh, you can verify that this formula happens to be correct. And so uh, you can directly use this formula. It's kind of more concise ra rather than to use this entire code. So here's the code. I select COM4 and flash the code. And once the code's flashed, I would just turn on the power supply. So the timer starts to stick. Uh, so the timer has started to stick. 
you can see that only the second value is getting updated. Let's watch it go up to 59. We are approaching the threshold and now you can see that it flips off to 0 and the minute has gone up from 58 to 59. So we are again getting close to the threshold of 59. You can see that both second as well as minute flip off to zero. And because of our hour was 23, and so that also flipped off to zero, and our code is working perfectly. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you.